In this video, I'm going to introduce the very important topics of vectors and matrices in MATLAB. I'm done with the part 01 intro folder, so I can click on this icon right here with the open manila envelope and the green arrow, and I'm going to navigate up one folder and then into the part 02 functions. If you downloaded all my content provided in the link in the description to the Google Drive, you may already have this all set up. If not, you might want to go download the next one. Again, just check the video descriptions on each of these. Open up part 02 functions, select folder, and then I want to open up part 010 vectors and matrices. So I double click on that and it pops right up. Most of my files are going to start with some basic formatting to just reset everything, clear out the workspace, clear out the command window, close any figures that might already be open, and reset the formatting to the way I like it. I recommend that you set up something at the very beginning that you can just run once and get back to a blank slate and then move onward with whatever programming you want to do. So control enter. You don't see any changes because I didn't have anything in the command window already, but I did just run this section. I am going to use the term vector to refer to lists of numbers in MATLAB. In other programming languages, you may refer to this as an array, but in MATLAB, we're going to call it a vector. MATLAB vectors are not necessarily math physics vectors. When I say vector, you think of a list of numbers, not necessarily a direction and a magnitude, although that is a pair of numbers, and we could generalize it to more dimensions where it would be a longer list of numbers. So you can certainly use vectors to represent the physics or mathematical vector that is a direction and a magnitude, but that's not really what we're going to be referring to in this video series. So when you hear vector, you think list of numbers. That's it. Scrolling on down. Let me run this section. I'll click over here. I'm going to make my window wider before I run it. Control enter. And then I'm going to scroll up in my command window to the top right up here. On line 24, I have created a vector named vector1. I can name it whatever I want. I don't have to have vector in the name. I could name it x, y, a, b, c, tom, jerry, whatever but I named mine vector1 because I thought that was a good name. I put into that variable a whole list of numbers, starting with an open square bracket. Square brackets are the same keys as your curly brackets on your keyboard. They're right near the enter key, slightly up and to the left. And then I put in a list of numbers, separated by spaces or commas, or both. You can put in more than one space if you want, but you don't really need to. I just did that here just to show that I could. And then when you're done, you close it off with a square bracket, and you can suppress the output like you would with any other expression with a semicolon at the end. I display out some text by putting it inside the apostrophes. There's vector one right there being displayed from this line. And then I can display the variable itself, vector one. Now vectors are displayed a little bit differently because they are many numbers as opposed to a single number. And if it's too wide to fit on the command window, especially with the larger font size I'm using, MATLAB will tell you sort of how many columns you're seeing before it wraps around and displays the next set of columns and then the last set of columns. I will show you some alternatives if you don't like this formatting, which I personally don't, but for now that's what we're going to use. So you can separate your numbers with spaces, you can separate your numbers with commas, you can use both however you like, figure out what works for you. Scrolling down slightly. So vector2 displayed out right here, similar format, using these displays right there. Reminder, I'm using DISP parentheses and then apostrophes with a single blank space uh, to just do a new line, just a single new line. I don't want everything double-spaced, but occasionally I want a little extra space to make uh, reading of the output a little bit easier. Continuing on down, parentheses are used after the variable name to index into the vector, to access a particular value based on its position or its index. So for example, what is the value in vector 1 at position 5? I can get that information by saying, let's display vector 1 parentheses 5. And I get negative 67. Where did that come from? Well, scrolling back up, the fifth value in vector 1 is negative 67. Indexing starts at 1 in MATLAB. If you're new to programming, you're like, sure, obviously, it starts at 1. But if you've done any other programming in other programming languages, you might be a little surprised that indexing starts at 1 as opposed to 0. So 2 is at index 1, 4 is at index 2, index 3, index 4, index 5, index 6, index 7, index 8. So suppose I want to grab this negative 7 instead of the negative 67. Well, scrolling back down instead of the 5 here, I would want position 8. 
think of a vector, and there's my negative 7 right there. Think of a vector as a bookshelf, and each shelf is numbered. What is on shelf number 8? Ah, well, that's where I store my negative 7. And there you go. What is the value in vector 2 at position 4? So that value is number 8, and we can verify that that is correct by looking at, oh, here's the first value, second value, third value, fourth value. There's the number 8 right there. You want the 59? Well, that's two numbers down. So instead of accessing at position 4, we could access at position 6 and run it again, and there we go, we get the 59 right there. Indexing is an essential skill to have. We will be doing indexing throughout all of the videos in this course. Scrolling on down. More interaction with vectors. So here's that same vector from before, vector 1. We're going to keep interacting with it. I'm not going to display it because I've suppressed the output here with a semicolon. Control enter to run this section, and then scrolling up slightly. If I want to know how many numbers are in the vector, I can use the length function, built-in MATLAB function. You just say length, parentheses, and then what are you asking for the length of? I'm asking for the length of vector 1 right here, and I'm going to put the result of that in a variable named vector underscore length. It's worth noting that some languages recommend that you name your variables with underscores and all lowercase letters. Others, the convention is to not use underscores and to capitalize any words other than the first letter in the variable name, so like vector length like this. I go back and forth because I initially learned it with the underscores and lowercase, but the convention in Java, which I also teach, is to do it the other way, so my brain is all mixed up. But in any case, these are all ver valid variable names, and you can use whichever convention uh, feels right for you. So there are eight numbers in vector one. So when I display out the result here, I get the number eight. More indexing. Suppose I want to copy the second value from vector one into a new variable named x right here. Well, here's how I can do it. Put into x the value from vector one at position two, which happens to be the number four right here. And so when I display out x, I get four. Scrolling on down. I can also replace a value in the vector. I can put vector indexed at a position such as 3 on the left side of an equal sign, the way I would put any other variable name. In fact, you can think of a vector as a big long list of numbered variables. It's kind of like I have vector 1, 1, so 1 at position 1, set equal to 2, and then I have vector 1, position 2, set equal to 4, and so on, all the way through my vector. But we don't just name the variables like that. that. Those would be separate variables. We use parentheses and we bundle all of the information inside of one variable name, in this case named vector 1. So here, I'm going to say put the value of 6 into the vector at position 3, replacing the old value at position 3. So what was the old value? It was 36. So instead of 2, 4, 36, 7, we're going to go 2, 4, 6, 7. And once I redisplay out vector 1, after having run this code, made this change, you can see it goes 2, 4, 6, 7, and then so on through the rest of the vector. Continuing on down. All the previous vectors I've shown you are horizontal. But vectors can also be vertical. So here I'm going to clear everything out, clear in CLC. And then I'm going to create a vertical, a couple vertical vectors here. Let me run this code, Control enter scroll up slightly. Here's my first vector right here. The information is arrayed vertically. I honestly think it's easier to read than the horizontal. And the way I did this is, instead of separating my numbers with commas or spaces, I separate them with semicolons. Or you could just write out the numbers vertically. So this also works. I like to make the indentation so that the numbers line up, although technically you don't have to do that, but I find that even this sort of thing is just hard to read. So I like to make them line up. It's obviously a little bit easier with shorter variable names, but in any case, I think this is easier to read. So this is also a vertical vector. And there it is right there. Continuing on down. Indexing with vertical vectors is exactly the same with horizontal. Suppose I want to replace the fourth value with 999. I can do that by saying, take 999 and put it into the variable named column vector at position four, and then displaying it out. Let's do that. I need to scroll up slightly. Here's my original, 2637367, scrolling down. 
Here's the new one, where I replaced the fourth value with 999. All the other numbers in the vector stayed the same. I just put this value into the vector at position 4. Suppose I want to copy out the fifth value, so the number 3 right here. Well, get from column vector at position 5 the value, and then put it into the variable named t, a new variable. When I display that out, I see the 3 right there. I can ask for the length of a column vector, and it's the same as asking for the length of a horizontal vector. How many values are in it? In this case, there are seven values. Scrolling on down. Now we're going to be talking about matrices. I'm going to keep it on the same video because this is an important and related topic. Matrices are fundamental to MATLAB. The MAT in MATLAB is literally short for matrices. So it's right there in the name. A matrix is simply a two-dimensional grid of numbers, like a spreadsheet. So if you've ever worked with Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets or any of these uh, spreadsheet programs, you've probably worked with a grid of numbers, rows and columns of numeric values. Well, that is what a matrix is. We can create a matrix very similar to how we create a vector. We use a variable name, name it whatever you want. It doesn't have to have matrix in the name. I just thought that would be a good name here. And then set it equal to, and then use opening brackets, list out the numbers in the first row of your matrix, and then go down to the next row and list out the numbers in the second row of your matrix. And we could do a third row if you wanted, just go down again. Close it off when you're done with closing square bracket, and you can suppress the output or not with a semicolon. Let's run this section, control enter, and I'm gonna scroll back up in my command window. I don't like how this displayed out, so I'm gonna make the command window a little bit wider and then run it again, control enter, scroll up, and now it fits better on the screen, it's easier to read, all right. And you may or may not have that problem depending on the font size that you're using. So I'll narrow it back down again. And as you can see, when I display out my matrix variable, the numbers are arranged in a grid with two rows and four columns. Continuing on down slightly, there are other ways to create a matrix, similar to there's other ways to create vectors. I can separate the values in a single row with commas and then use a semicolon to indicate going down to the next row. And then another semicolon to indicate going down to the third row. So my second matrix here has three rows and three columns. Now, I don't like this formatting personally. I think this is hard to read and hard to visually easily see what's going on. So I would recommend if you're gonna have multiple rows in your matrix, display them out or write them out in the code where you can visually see those separate rows. So here's the exact same values. And when I display out matrix three, you can see it's the exact same results right here. Uh, and I think it's easier to read in the MATLAB uh, editor in the document as well. Continuing on down, you don't actually need the indentation. So here's an example without it, and you get the same result. But again, I think this is hard to read. I don't recommend doing it. Continuing on down. Indexing into matrices is very similar to indexing into vectors, except you're going to have two indexes because you need one for the rows and one for the columns. So to access the value at row two, column three, in matrix three, what we can say is, okay, from matrix three, parentheses, give me this row, comma, give me this column. So let me run this code here. So here's my original matrix three. And by saying that variable name, matrix three, parentheses two, comma three, I'm gonna get row two and column three. It's gonna give me the intersection right there, the 59. 59 will be put into X and it'll display 59 and there it is right there. Continuing on down, I can do the exact same thing on the left side of an equal sign. I can replace inside of matrix three, row one, column one, whatever value was there, I can put in a 999 instead. So instead of the seven right here, we replace that with this, all the other values stay the same. Continuing on down. So I've just got an example matrix here. Let me run this section. All right, so here's my example matrix, two rows, four columns. I can use a special function called size to figure out how many rows and columns there are in my matrix, which is not that helpful when it's just two by four, but if it was significantly larger in the hundreds of thousands, it might be really nice to be able to just ask MATLAB, oh yeah, how many rows and columns are we dealing with? Now, this line of code here is a little bit weird and different. Let me just space it out slightly to show what's going on. So size is the built-in MATLAB function. 
and we're saying give me the size of, in parentheses, in this case, matrix 1. But the weird part is what's happening on the left side of the equal sign. In MATLAB, some functions can give back, can return more than one result. Size is a function that gives you two numbers as a result. The first number is going to be the number of rows in the given matrix, and the second number is going to be the number of columns. So we need two variables to catch, to capture the results from the function named size. I named my variables rows and columns. That's not necessary. I could have named them A and B or X and Y or whatever, but I feel like, you know, these are good informative variable names, so I will be using these. And we see displayed in the output, rows is two, columns is four. And that resulted, the highlighted output right here in the command window resulted from this line of code. Now, alternatively, you could use the built-in height function to get the number of rows, and separately the width function to get the number of columns. Be warned that this does not work in earlier versions of MATLAB. Now, when I say earlier, I don't exactly know when height and width were introduced, but like, it's got to be like an earlier version than like 22. I think you have to have like 2021 or earlier. So if you've got MATLAB from the past couple years, you're in great shape. The other thing that I need to note at this point is all the code that I've showed you up to this point, unless otherwise noted, works perfectly in Octave, not these two lines of code. Octave, the default vanilla version of Octave without any plugins installed, does not have the height and the width. But you can do size just like this and still get access to the rows and columns, so you don't really need height and width. I believe I forgot to mention in the previous videos that like that code also works in Octave. I am checking it beforehand. I will let you know if anything does not work in Octave. Moving on down. One of the reasons that I combined the vector and matrix introductions into one single video is because vectors are literally just one-dimensional matrices. I'm going to run the code in this section, control enter. I started off by creating a short little vector right here, displayed out in this uh, output on the command window. And then I ask the size function, how many rows and columns are in my vector v? And it answers perfectly fine. Well, there's just one row and five columns. Okay, well, what's the height? Well, that's one. What's the width? Oh, well, that's five right here. So a vector is literally just a one-dimensional matrix. When I start using the word array in these videos, array refers to any number of dimensional uh, arrangement of numbers. So an array is a more broad category. Could refer to vectors, one-dimensional, matrices, two-dimensional, or higher dimensional organizations. Now, people will use the term like three-dimensional matrix, but I will say it's a, an array at that point. I will use matrix to refer to two-dimensional organizations of numbers exclusively, unless I misspeak, which could happen. Continuing on down, matrix errors. There's many different things that can go wrong with matrices. I'm just gonna show you one of them right here. Let's run this section of code, control enter. Error using vert cat. Now, what sort of feline is a vert cat. No, 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 no. It's not a kitty cat. The cat part is short for concatenated. Now that's just a big fancy word meaning attached. So there was a failure to perform a vertical attachment. So we were trying to put together one, two, three vertically with the row beneath it, four, five, six, seven. But the problem is that the dimensions are not consistent. There are three columns in row one and there are four columns in row two and that doesn't line up. We need all of our columns to line up equally, and this does not work. Now, what if you're missing info? What if you're gathering real-world data and it's messy and you don't have certain information? Well, one thing that you can do is you could use NAN, capital N, lowercase a, capital N, which is a way to say not a number. It's a little bit ironic because it's literally being used to stand in for a number, but it itself is not a number. I'm not actually going to use NAN in very many of these videos, hardly any at all, but I felt like this was an opportunity to just throw that out there and let you know that this is one option that you could use potentially to fill in gaps if you have some sort of data that is incomplete. We're going to talk much more about vectors and matrices and indexing throughout these videos, but that is all for this one. I hope to see you next time. Thanks, folks. Bye.